I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Good morning and welcome to the church that meets here at Malden. We're so glad you all took the time out of your day to come worship with us in spirit and in truth. I don't see any visitors, but if you are visiting with us today, we'd like you to know that you are our honored guest. I'd like you to fill out an attendance card so that we may have a record of your visit. I have just a few announcements today. We're pretty low on our number. we got several that are out sick. We have some that are some that are out traveling, and I'm quite sure we probably have some that are working today. Uh, David is at the at the beach at the uh, at the Olympics, and he has won a gold medal. He should be on his way home. Uh, he should be back with us tonight. So let's let's congratulate him when we see him. He'll show you that medal, I'm sure. <laughs> he had a picture yesterday when he when he won. That was awesome. Also. If you haven't got a bulletin, you know where they are. They're on the table in the foyer on the left. Please grab one. There's a lot of great uh, information in there. We have a lot of birthdays this month. A lot of us are going to get a year older. My name's not in there yet, but it will be. Uh, so wish all these folks a happy birthday if you would. I'd also like to, Paul Luttrell and Susan are not with us, but uh, Paul is, is, has completed his radiation treatment, so... If you see him, give him a pat on the back, and let's hope he recovers and, and is able to be with us. I'd like to inform you all that uh, Vernon is out of the hospital. If you didn't know, he was at St. Francis with pneumonia. He is home recovering now. Uh, he is recovering well. It just says that he is very sore, um, so he just needs some rest. We would like to thank uh, Pam for this month's bulletins. Thank you, Pam. And last but not least, we would like everyone to know that we are going to have a Veterans Day dinner to honor our veterans, which will be on November 13th. So please mark your calendars. Uh, we won't be having our fellowship dinner on the fourth Sunday due to Thanksgiving. So it's time for the holidays. Get ready. And please try to join us on the 13th uh, of this month for our Veterans uh, Day lunch. Uh, in this morning's worship service, oh, one more thing I wanted to add. Uh, let's keep our brother Joel Maddox in our prayers. He's been home all, all week sick as well. And they don't exactly know exactly what's wrong with him. He's coughing, got congestion, and he sounds terrible if you talk to him. So uh, let's keep him in our prayers as well. And hopefully he'll regain his strength and be back with us uh, soon. In this morning's worship service, uh, Brother Dennis Stroud will be having our lesson. Uh, Joel Foster will be uh, having our song service. Uh, Brother Ray Moore will read our scripture before service. And Joe Mormon will be having our closing prayer. And if you, if you would bow with me, we'll get started with opening prayer. Almighty God and our Father who art in heaven, that will be the great and holy name. Dear Lord, we come in prayer this morning, praising your high and holy name, giving thanks to Thanks for this opportunity that we have to gather here as your children, a group of believers, to, to worship you in spirit and in truth, to sing songs of praises unto thee, to gather around thy table to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to hear another portion of your true and divine word. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your word and the truth that is found in it, and we know that if we will only open it and study it and be obedient to it that we will not only live a quality life here on earth, but we will have that most wanted 
home in heaven with you when that day comes. Lord, we're so thankful for the church that meets here in Malden. We're so thankful for your church the world over. We just pray that, that it would continue to grow, that more people would, would come and hear your word, that more would come to be saved. Dear Lord, we are thankful this morning for each and every uh, person who has come to this worship service. We pray for your blessings on them and their families. But we're also mindful, Lord, this morning of those who are not here. We have many members who are out sick. We have many that are recovering. We have some that are out traveling. And we just pray, Father, that, that those who are sick would regain their strength and their health and be able to come worship with us again. We pray for those who are traveling that they would have safe travels and, and be able to reunite with us as well. But we also pray this morning for... For those who that may be spiritual lost, we spiritually lost, we pray for those that are spiritually sick that they may change the air of their ways. Somebody may guide them. Somebody may show them the love Jesus has for them, and that they would come to your fold, Father, before it's eternally too late. We do also pray, Father, this morning for Brother Dennis as he brings us our lesson. We pray that he would have a ready recollection of the things that, that he has studied. Pray that he would be able to deliver them unto us in a way that, that we would understand so that we may take what we need, we may apply them to our lives, that we continue being the Christians you expect us to be. We pray, Father, this morning for Brother Joel as he leads our song service. Pray that we would all lift our voices up, the sweet savor unto thee. We pray, Father, that all that is said and done in the service was, was in accordance to your will. We pray, Father, at this time also for our country. We know that there's a great falling away. We pray, Father, for our government. We pray for this upcoming election. We just pray, Father, that, that you would defeat all things contrary unto your word. We're thankful, Father, at this time also to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth without fear of persecution. Lord, we know that it's not that way throughout the world. And we're thankful for that blessing. Dear Lord, as we continue to go through the further exercise of this service, we pray that all is said and done is pleasing unto thee, and we pray that you forgive us when we fall short. This prayer we ask this morning is in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Six, five, seven. Six, five, seven. My soul in sad air was out of life seems over and with sin and distress.
Lord's Supper. One, six, eight. <clears throat> One, six, eight. yourself in ancient Egypt, Moses coming around and warning you that a death angel was coming, that there was only one way to be able to save your firstborn, to take an unblemished lamb and cook it to take the bitters, to take the blood of that lamb and put it around the door frame of your house. All who obeyed those instructions that night, their firstborn sons lived. And those who did not die. And for centuries after that, the Jewish people partook of that memorial feast, that Passover feast, until the time that God judged it that it was the proper time to send his son into this world. And as Jesus was preparing that evening, his disciples, 
and giving them something to remember him by. And that was passed on to us. As Jesus being a sinless Jew, a sinless son of man, son of God, he used that Passover meal to give us the Lord's Supper that us as Gentiles, as heathens in those days, were not able to partake of. But as they were eating, Mark 14 tells us, starting in verse 22, that he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to them, and he said, take, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank all of it. And he said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. That's what makes this feast so important, is it was poured out for all of us. Not one group of people, not one religious sect, but all those who have obeyed the gospel, who have, have taken the Lord as their Savior, and who was obedient to the will of God. So we take this time to through the bread remember his body that was nailed to that cross and the fruit of the vine and remembers the blood that was shed for us and washed away the sins of the world and for those who have obeyed continually washes until that day we have now the blessing for the prayer please let us pray our precious heavenly father as we come unto thee at this time at this memorial as we reflect back to that cross that demonstrated the greatest love it ever had. We pray, Father, that each and every one participates in this memorial. We pray, Father, that they will do so in a way and manner that will be well pleasing in our sight. We ask, Father, you forgive us of our sins and be with us as we go through the remainder of the season. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. have them have a blessing for the cup, please. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we continue our prayers this morning as we gather around the table to give thanks for this cup, this fruit of the vine, which represents the blood Jesus shed for, for all of us. We just pray, Father, as we partake of this cup that our minds will go back and remember that, that day and, and that we will drink in a manner well pleasing unto thee. It's in Christ's loving name we pray. Amen.
also given the command that on the first day of the week, we are to lay by and store. The church in the first century, when it was moved out of Jerusalem, when it started to spread, there was a tremendous persecution that came to the brethren in Jerusalem itself. Many during that great persecution found themselves in prison. They found themselves being put out of their homes and losing their jobs, not having a way to support themselves and their families. It was the churches that Paul had established in Corinth and Asia Minor that was able to sustain the church in Jerusalem. They did it through their contributions. Paul was very much pleased with those who were able to support that church. But he also had commanded the Corinthians, just as he did the churches in Galatia, to lay by and stone, so that there be no gatherings when he came. It is no different today than it was then. But we support congregations who cannot completely support themselves. We support our missions who cannot support themselves and of themselves. It takes us all working together. So as we prepare ourselves and our hearts and our minds this morning, let us be mindful of those things. That our giving is not just a putting something in the, in the basket this morning, but it is putting our heart and our joy in that basket. May it allow us to continue always to be able to keep our presence here in this neighborhood and in this world. We have the blessings now for the offering. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day and for everything that we have and enjoy in this life. We know all good things do come from thee. We pray that we'll ever be grateful for these things as we prepare now to give back us a small portion and we do it in a manner you find pleasing. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Four nine six. Four nine six. <laughs> Yeah. 
for, and the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the Yonder I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept, you, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for our salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. The love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, maintains that there are three great things in the Christian faith. Faith, hope, and love. Faith is the door that makes intimacy possible. Love is the road that intimacy travels. And hope is the engine that drives and helps maintain our intimacy with God. It is hope that draws us closer to God. It is hope that prompts our faithfulness and it compels our perseverance. It is there that Paul ties them together in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. Paul writes here, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Hope is a topic, an important topic in the Bible, insomuch that it appears in the King James about 190 times. There is intimacy that can be found in some of these verses, in particular Psalm 33 and verse 18, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. 
Romans 5 and verse 5, it tells us that hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. In Hebrews 3 and verse 6, Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house if indeed we hold our confidence and our boasting and our hope. And Hebrews 6 and verse 19 tells us that hope the anchor to our souls. You know, as a world, we express hope in vague terms. Random possibilities with fantastic odds. Kind of like our chances of winning the Publishers Clearinghouse or the Powerball or the Mega Millions Lottery. We don't oftentimes read the little fine print. The Powerball, 292 million to one chances of winning. The Mega Millions, 302.5 million to one chances of winning. I don't know what the publisher's query house is, because that's free and everybody puts in for that one. But that's where we put our hope. Mathematically speaking, there is five million different combinations between one and 59. When we think of hope today, it carries a little bit of uncertainty. I hope my car starts and I'm ready to go home. We say it when we're not sure, or when we're uncertain about the possibility. And this is the great difference between our worldview of hope and the biblical hope. Because biblical hope is totally different. It is a hope that is based on a confident expectation. It is a desire coupled with an expectation of obtaining what is desired. It is our own personal belief, a faith that our desire is obtainable. And a desire that expects to be fulfilled. It is Peter, of all the writers in the New Testament, that gives us the best insight of hope. And we'll go back to our scripture reading. We'll, we'll go ahead and read verses 3 through 5, but we'll continue on to verse 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Though for now, a little while, if necessary, you've been grieved of various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor, and the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you've not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. So what is the basis of our hope? Where do we obtain this hope that drives our walk with God? Hope comes from Scripture. Psalm 78, verses 5 through 7. David writes here, He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel to 
which he commanded our fathers to teach their children that the next generation might know them. The children yet unborn and arise and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. We are always reminded in Romans 15 and verse 4 that, that Paul said that whatever was written before in the former days were written for our instruction. <coughs> that through endurance and encouragement that we might have hope. Our faith, our hope comes from reading and hearing the Word of God. The more we know, the more hope we have. Biblical hope is that expectant, that confidence. It is based on thousands of years of seeing God at work and on the hundreds of prophecies that have been fulfilled. But if we don't read it, we'll never see it. We've probably sometimes been asked, well, what is the message of the gospel? And to put it in extremely simple terms, it is forgiveness, salvation, victory over death, a future life in heaven. To Colossians 1 and verse 23, it says, If indeed you continue in faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which has been proclaimed by all creation under heaven. Friends, it's the gospel that makes our hope possible. Our hope is dependent upon Christ. This is exactly what Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus by command of our God and Savior, and of Jesus Christ, our hope. If our hope was dependent on us, on our Righteousness. How much certainty do you think that hope would rest in? But our hope is not based on us. It is based on Christ. And because it is based on him, our hope can be certain. See, it's his righteousness. It's his sinlessness. His perfection. That sacrificial death and his walk with God that makes our hope possible. Now, Paul tells us that New Testament baptism covers us. It clothes us with Christ. That we put on Christ so that when God looks at each one of us, he doesn't see our puny attempt at righteousness. He doesn't see our sins. He sees his son. His perfect son. So being in Christ makes our hope certain. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Paul said, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God the Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace. <coughs> comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Our relationship with God is not based on our merit. It is not based on our righteousness, but on his grace and mercy. And our hope is based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul made the point in 1 Corinthians that if the tomb of Jesus had been occupied, our faith, our hope, our expectation would 
be in vain. And if Christ is not risen, we're still in our sins. And there is no forgiveness that takes place. If Jesus didn't experience the resurrection, we won't eat. Philippians 3 and verse 10, Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him, like him in his death. Friends, the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that is going to raise us from the dead. Peter says that our hope is through a new birth. It's kind of reminiscent of Jesus' discussion with Nicodemus in John chapter 3, where Jesus said, unless you have been born of the water and the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Verses 21 through 23, 1 Peter chapter 1. Who through him are believers of God, who raised him from the dead, gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again. Not of the perishable seed, but of imperishable. Through the living and abiding word of God. Until, unless, we've obeyed the truth. And we have been born again. There is no biblical hope. We will not have that intimacy with God. our hope is assured by our steadfastness and faithfulness. We can't have a relationship with God by living just any way we want to live. Romans 5 and verses 3 and 4, Paul, he said not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. Well, the entire book of Hebrews is a warning about forsaking our walk with Jesus and going back to the way we used to do things, the way we used to behave. And Paul said that his hope was based on the fact that he fought the fight. That he finished his course. That he kept the faith. That's how Paul maintained his hope. Increased his hope by doing those things. That's why he could, at the very end of his life, say with full certainty that he was going to receive that crown of life. But he also said that it wasn't going to be just for him, but everybody was willing to be faithful and steadfast. <coughs> Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. A verse that should be very familiar with us, where he says, Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because you know, now you are certain, that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Friends, our hope is a living hope. It's living because Jesus lives. It's like the song that we sing sometimes, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he holds the future. Life is worth living because he lives. Life can be ugly. It can be unhappy. It can be gloomy, depressing, anxious, and uncertain. 
But for those with hope, life can be fulfilling, can be joy, peace, happiness, contentment, and the certainty that we know our destination. The difference is found in whether or not we are living in hope. And that is something, that is a decision that each of us individually must make. And that decision is your opportunity this morning. Are you living in hope? Are you a child of God to where your hope is certain? You know where you will be when this earth passes away. You can be certain this morning by giving yourself to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. While it is a difficult decision because it requires a sacrifice on your part, a sacrifice means you're willing to give up your way of life and to change. You do that through repentance. We allow and let the world know that Jesus is our Lord and Savior through our confession, that he is the Son of God. And then we have our sins washed away through New Testament baptism. That is what you desire this morning. We want to give you that opportunity. Maybe you just need to reboot, to get things back into perspective, to ask God for forgiveness for something that, uh, that you are struggling with. Maybe you just need our prayers. Whatever it is, won't you come? Together we stand and we sing. <coughs>
you're looking around for those that have not made it, maybe give them a call. Especially remember their prayers because we have many that are sick, have been for the last several weeks. Look forward to being back here at 5 this evening. This time we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for our homes and our family. Thank you for the church that meets in this place. We give thanks, Heavenly Father, for our country, the, the freedom that we have in this nation. We pray for our leaders that they can lead this nation in ways which will be will all accepted in your sight. Heavenly Father, we we pray for all our number who are sick and not able to be with us at this point. We have so many who are ill. We pray for them that they can be with us again and do, do your will. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for it. everything that we bless with today. We thank you for our families and we pray for the ones who are not with us this morning as they travel their return for this trip this morning that they will be safe and back with us this evening. We thank you, God. We thank you for We thank you for our nation, Heavenly Father. We thank you for everything that you bless us with every day. We give thanks for this church that meets in this place and pray your blessing upon it that we might do things that are acceptable in your sight and the church might grow and be, be, uh, be more people of Christ every day. We pray that you'll help us to lead this way and we have the hope that we heard about in this lesson this morning and we we'll hope that we'll have a hope in heaven when we leave this earth. We pray that we can have that hope nourish it and grow it stronger every day. We are the God, we pray that you be with us now. We watch over and care for us as we leave this place today. We'll be in the next appointed time this evening. We give us that we are safely and without harm. We pray in the strong and loving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.